And now, on TBC, due to an unsightly cold sore and unruly hair, there has been a change to your scheduled programming. So enjoy this classic war film. That's right, the show must go on. Oh, hello, welcome to Tweed's Garage. Right, oh, Jenkins, where are you? Jenkins. Idiot. Hello, and welcome to Tweed's Garage, where in this video, we're doing more work on the BSA Bantam. Um, got the new loom, so we're ripping out the old loom, putting the new loom in, and then going through the switches on the headlight and the handlebars. So, come along, have a little look, see what we've got up to. All right, come on. Right, let's get it stripped down to get the loom on. So, see, compulsory mug of tea. Right, let's remove the tank. Different size, of course it is to watch these little chrome trim strips so we don't damage them. Mm, good grief, it's got something in it. I think we can get to most of it. Start laying it in. Put the original straps here. Might use cable ties for now, keep those. One goes to the horn as well, but it's been wired in somewhere. Yep, that wouldn't have worked. There we go, I think we'll snip some of those off. Got a broken wire coming out the alternator there. Got to investigate. Things coming out okay. There we go. Loom released to the headlight. Just got to pull out the headlight now. Just get in the headlight. These bullet connections, sometimes they just fall out and other times they're really tight. <laughs> nice bit of uh, insulation. Side light, Connect, disconnected already. Just snip those off for now. See if we can save the rubber grommet. There we go, not too bad. These are up to the light switch. Off we pull. That's it, it's loose. There we go. One wiring loom out. So the loom definitely needed changing. These these plugs had uh, had it. You can't. They don't sort of notice too much when you first look at them, but then you notice there. Can you see somebody's? Obviously the connectors have gone, and somebody's stuck a piece of wire in to replace the connector, and there as well. Yeah, and they're quite corroded, I think, on this one there. Yeah, the terminals there and there are pretty corroded. And they're quite spread apart. And they should look like... Where's the new ones? Here's the new ones. Compared to the old ones. You can see the, see the difference. So I think we're on to a winner here. So ignore my footwear, it's the uh, height of Kiwi foot fashion. So the new wiring loom has arrived. Um, this is a genuine Lucas item. I was a bit concerned because all the, all the boxes I saw on the internet were green in the uh, sort of classic Lucas boxing with a green with the two white flashes on named Lucas. Um, but this appears to be new packaging for their authentic classic range. So, 
allegedly made in the UK. Who knows nowadays? So it comes the box, nice the package, little pillows for your uh, pet dog, and we have a few sub assembly looms. That one's for the brake switch. This is for the rear light brake switch. This one, not sure of. And here is the loom, complete with its um, its period correct Y pack connectors. One for the uh, one for the light switch, one for the ignition switch. And a couple of these on there for the headlight pilot light. All fabric wound. And then it comes with the other connections. Go to the uh, alternator earthing points. And it has a fuse on, which is more than it did before. And uh, battery connections. So yeah, that's that. Well, there are a few spare connections to make, make the ends of the other leads up. And wiring loom installation plan. I think the colours vary slightly from the original. But um, at least with this you'll be able to... Uh, tie up the colours on the new loom with the colours on the old loom. Then all I need to do is uh, take the old one off, pop this one on. Easy. There doesn't seem to be any neatness to the loom, but once you sort of lay it out, you suddenly realise that they've put it on a board and wired it the way it goes on the bike so these if you put them this way the, these uh, plugs point upwards towards the the uh, top of the headlight and it runs along the frame and then this earth point falls to uh, connect to the rear mount of the uh, tank bolt and then it drops down towards the battery tray and the alternator so that's the way we'll pop it on See if we can get it under the headlight without having to uh, move it. No, I don't think the plugs are going to go in that way. Feed it from the front to the back. for the brake lights so they sort of point down point down that way there for the rear light so that goes that way and it comes back round like that those are for not sure at the moment but look at the wiring diagram those go there it all sort of sits there quite nice it's a bit of a bit of a bulge there but we'll work it out and then these come round here and then that goes down to the alternator and the rectifier unit down down there something like that there you go and we just got to tidy it up and uh, clip it on I'm going to use cable ties rather than these I know these are original and uh, purists would sort of pop these back on but they're you know they're sharp on the edges and they damage the loom um, whereas these cable ties as long as you don't do them too tight you know don't don't damage the uh, cable so much 
it might upset the uh, concourse judges, um, but we won't be entering one of those competitions. Not my idea of fun. Because as I said before, I don't like polishing. I'll just put some round loose now just to hold it in place, roughly. So I can work out where it sits the best. There we go, and then all we've got to do is wire it in. But uh, I'll probably do that off camera, because it's fairly tedious. So, see you later. So the first thing we need to do is take the uh, switches out of the headlamp and clean up the connectors on the bottom, because as I showed earlier, they're all sort of quite corroded up. So what you do first is ease off the uh, knobs on the top. They're just a sprung, sprung fit. So if you gently ease them up straight, they, uh, they come off. And under that, you've got the fixing nut so you undo the fixing nut and then drop the switches out the back so the switch comes out with its um, indexing plate and with the switches out it's uh, time to pop into the workshop and uh, give them a clean as you can see the terminals on these are quite corroded and uh, need, need a good clean. I um, use the Dremel with a little scotch bright wheel on it that um, brought them up really nicely and then just run a, run a file over the outside edges of each connection because that's where the terminals from the uh, plug go on to because it's sort of circular it only makes contact on the on the outside thin edges not the nice flat sides which seems seems a bit of a waste but yeah um, there does seem to be one main one on both switches this one this one I think number two number two terminal I'm not sure whether it's a brass coated steel one that one um, but it might be the main feed in to the switch and uh, I think it's the bit that draws the most current because the one on the ignition one was quite dark where it had uh, obviously been getting hot and then the one on the light is not so bad um, yeah when I've cleaned them off they seem to be steel soon find out where's a magnet No, nope, don't seem to be. So maybe it's just, they've just discoloured where they've uh, got really hot. So, terminals are nice and clean, ready to go back in. Um, but we're going to run a continuity test on them, which I have the pinouts and how to test them in the manual that I got with it. So we'll do that. So we start off with a switch in the mid position, which is the off position there, and taking it as that's terminal 10, so this should be terminal 1. So the first one we want to do is check between 1 and 2 for continuity. You always need three hands when doing this. Right, we've sorted the third hand issue. Okay, so we're taking it that this is 10. This is one, two, that way round. So in the off position, continue between one and two and 10, which we have. And then between five and six, which we have, and then eight and nine. Okay, next we take the switch position to H. Turn the knob clockwise, clockwise. And then we show continuity between pins one and two. Uh, we have some, but it isn't isn't great. And ten, yeah, it's a bit sticky. Uh, okay. OK, 
Okay, and then four and five. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, sorry. One, two, three, four and five. Yep. Yeah. And then seven and eight. Five, six, seven and eight. Mm, a bit sticky there as well. Okay, and then the other direction to the low position. Can't you want to curve between pins two, three, and nine? So, two. Yep. And between six and seven. That's okay. Okay. Okay, so I went away and had a little play with the switches. Uh, the, the light one, um, continuity is pretty good between most of the pins, but not all of them according to the book. But this ignition one is uh, pretty pretty dead sort of thing. So it's, it sort of works on a couple. But there should be continuity between those two and that one. It's okay there, so there's poor contact between those those two. And then, then it follows all the way around. One, two, three, five and six, eight and nine. Yeah, so looks like this switch is pretty duffo. Um, can get new ones, but I've got nothing to lose then. So what I'll do is I'll uh, take the back of this one off gently and see if it's just sort of muck and crud inside so we can clean it and get it working again. They're not really designed to be taken apart again, so be very gentle. I've sort of clamped it in the vise with the jaw a little bit below the edge of this tab to allow it to bend out a little bit. You don't want to sort of put it right there and then try and force it up. Little scriber. Just to get it going. Screwdriver, persuade it a little bit more. And then a pair of pliers to try and straighten that top bit out a bit so not all the bend is happening on the lower edge. There you go, I think that will get that out. Swinging. Looking soft, see what's going on. There we go. We'll mark it so we don't lose the position. Okay. crowd went silent. And this is probably where a spring and a ball bearing go shooting across the workshop never to be seen again. Things going ping underneath. There's a lot of crud in that which could be the reason it ain't working. It turns to the audience. Yeah yuck. I think that's a bit corroded in there. Okay, well, let's ease it apart. See how we get on. Let's try and mark everything so it goes back in the same way. Put it in the neutral position. There, the off position there. Mark that again so we know. Okay, 
goes the same way. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's ball bearings in there. Thought there might be. Oh, there we go. There's the springy things. That is a mess. There's no one of those. There they obviously the contacts between the switch. No. Oh. Only thing we can do is give it a clean and um, try and repair it. So there you go, I've managed to sort of uh, give it a clean without dropping it. It's made up of 15 pieces. So you've got four springs, one ball bearing, three copper contacts. Um, and you've got the sort of uh, switch support on the outside with a fitting for the switch shaft to go through. And then you've got your sort of switch cam indexing plate there, a little sort of friction plate there and then the drum that holds the three contacts and the ball bearing and all the springs. So, oh, oh and the case. So we've got to do is put it back together. And this is why we're on the wiring diagrams Y10, although it's not used, always shorts to two. It's got a shorting link in the body of the switch there, so it must be used on other applications. Okay, here we go. If I swear, it's because I've lost something. Things I'll do for you lot. Right, I've got a bit of battery grease here just to help lube up bits and bobs. He's dropped the lid already. Good start. Mm -hmm. That went on there. Like that. There's a little notch for it to sit in. There's that. that bit of grease in there for the small spring and the ball bearing see if we can grab that on the grease yep okay and then this plate goes on you can tell which way it is because there's a there's a wear mark on the back where the ball bearing's been dropping into, into the holes there. On there, in the middle position. There. Right, now the fun starts. Um, let's put some grease in the bottom to hold those springs in place. Okay, third spring. Okay. Mm. There's got to be a jaw. There's got to be a f an art to this, right? My finger's getting away. I apologise, but it's as fiddly as hell. Or is it easier to put the springs in afterwards? Mm. Yeah, they're all falling out. Okay, let's try again. Drop that in. Okay, this could be the way, but it could be the way to disaster as well. Okay, I've had a think, got one in, right. Squeeze between a pair of pliers, I don't know whether you can, you'll be able to see this. I don't want it shooting across the floor. Got 
Gotcha. Two saves, I reckon I'll have the England manager give me a ring. Like that. Right. Third time lucky. Oh, I heard that. Where'd it go? Gotcha, little bugger. Gotcha. Yeah. There you go. Three springs in there, and then hopefully, just put that back in there. The little washer locates, little friction plate locates on that lug there, like that. Move that into the mid position, there. Right, there we go. Grease on the shaft there. Pop that on. Here we go. So then see if that turns nicely. Right, mid position. Okay, bail it out again. We're now at anti-clockwise position, so we should have continuity between two, three, and nine. Two, three, two, three, and nine. And 10, which is that one down there. And then between six and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah, and then if we turn it neutral position, it should have one and two, 10, yeah. One, two, and ten, five, and six, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. So eight and nine. And then if you turn it to that position, which is the clockwise position, I know it's upside down, bear with me. It should be between one and two, and ten, because of the link. One and two, ten, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and seven, and eight. There we go. Just like a new switch. Right, see if we can put it back together. And there we go, seems to work okay. All pushed back quite nicely. Let's try the uh, switch. There you go. And then I'll buzz it out and check that it still works. I'll move on to the next one. So here are the switches ready to go back on. Um, they've got little dimples in the plate to um, locate in two holes on the shell. They're only pressings and they're not very high. And um, it allows the switches to move around a bit. <clears throat> and somebody had tried to make the dimples a bit deeper. And uh, the, the pressing had poked out, leaving, leaving a hole on each of them. So... I've put in these little aluminium rivets, hammered them in, uh, countersunk ones so they don't stick down too, too far below and distort the plate against the switch. Um, so that should help locate them. So all right, let's get these in. than I did before. There we 
go. Okay, then we just need to connect them up to the correct switches. So look at the diagram, diagram here. So the light socket has pink on it and the ignition one has white on it. The white one. The ignition. Okay, I've got the wrong way around. I'll swap. Oh, don't need to swap the switches around. The switches are identical, so you can, if you're trying to fault find these bantams, an electrical problem, you can swap the switches because they are identical apart from the knob. There we go. Problem sorted. Ignition that side. This one. Let me look to see where the got the, the blank area there that goes over that sort of cut down number 10 pin. There, and then push it on. Okay, pop in the lighting one that way. One more. There we go. It goes home. And that little loom sits nicely at the back of the headlight cover. Yeah, that fits quite nicely. Allowing room for the headlamp shell to, uh, sorry, allowing light for the headlight to go in without pulling all the wires out. Right, let's service this horrible PIFCO light switch. Of course you have to take everything off to get to it. Okay, move that out of the way. Get the bar end off. Somebody didn't glue that on. Well, if it did, the glue's uh, past its best. There, there. there we go. Because I think that other little bit of loom, not I didn't know what it was for, is to rewire the switch. So we might as well. Give it a service what's around it. Okay, so this is the, the loom for the switch. And the wires are nearly bang on the same length and the sleeving is yeah, the same length. So that's really good. Okay, let's treat it to a new bit of paper. The good thing about these close-up shots is I don't have to show you the mess that my bench is in. Take that out. And then this allows Chrome shroud to slide back. I think this grommet comes out. There we go. Slide that off. Give it a bit of a clean up. So the only thing is we've got slightly different colours of cable. I know the purple one is the horn. This is the horn circuit. Uh, we've got blue and white, so we can swap that with blue and white. And then we've got red and blue. And the only one we haven't got is this blue one, but we've got pink, so we'll replace the replace the uh, Blue one with the pink one.
Okay, let's pop those out and I'll sort those out in a bit. Uh, no, I'll see what it is. Uh, these uh, welded over plastic tabs keep it all together. Okay, let's have a think about this. Managed to sort of knock off the flashing where it's um, melted over. That just sort of popped off quite nicely, leaving the spigots there, and then gently going around and prising it with a screwdriver. Managed to sort of uh, get it to move, move up. No. And there we go. One MyPack horn and light switch or Pifco torch switch. So very simple in operation. This is uh, between your high beam and your low beam. One of the pins has stayed in the board there. So there's another pin here. So this is your incoming power. And then that slides across to short out those two for your high beam cross short between that one and that one for your low beam and then your horns basically or yeah and yeah i don't know what this one's for probably flash if it's uh rigged up i don't think it is um they, these buttons just press these contacts these hinge contacts so your horn comes into here so 12 volt goes uh, sorry six volt goes through your horn from the battery through the horn up to here to this contact here and then when you push the button it shorts against the uh, metal of the handlebar to uh, sound your horn and it's as simple as that and probably as unreliable as that give me little buttons are clean mr crispin lent me his brother's toothbrush to do this Right, all the parts cleaned. Let's see if we can get it back together. There we go. Leave it over that way. And buttons need to go on. There they go. That way round, they go around two ways that way or that way, but they hang past the switch. So I think they need to go that way, so they stay on the chrome piece. That one, that one, I might swap them over actually because I think that I think that's the horn one. So we'll have a red one for the horn, just something to upset the fin counters. Continuing on there before we seal it back up again. Yep, that's okay. Just just run a cooling soldering iron down over the top top of those. Just to spread them out a bit. But because there's a bit of material missing because we've had to uh, cut them back a bit. I'll just put a little bit of aerodite on the top as well, just to seal it all together.
put the grommet on. Okay. Right, there we go. All wired back together. Let's put the out case on. I think we're nearly there. And there we go. One overhauled PIFCO, I mean Y pack, light and horn switch. What a quality piece of kit that is. So there you go, most of the dodgy wiring ripped out and the switches sorted. Just got to sort out the brake light switch, rear light, and uh, why, why the headlight bulb and that isn't working. Um, yeah, so all we're doing is wait for a new battery to turn up and connect it up, and then hopefully we can have a go at getting it running. But that's on the next video. So if you want to see more videos, hit the little subscribe button, the little tweeds garage down there or down the bottom. Give us a little like so I know you enjoy what we're doing, and I'll see you next time. All right. Cheerio! Do, 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 do. Old loom, new loom switches. Idiot. Hello and welcome to Tweed's Garage. In this video, I can go on. Oh, no, I can't. What's that? in a bag.